GTA 5, a bit of an oldie already, but still a quality title, very much worth playing if you've ever missed it. Meet Michael, Trevor and Franklin, three very different yet lovable protagonists that are the centerpiece of this story. Story The game starts out nine years in the past, with Michael, Trevor and Brad robbing a bank out in North Yankton. Their escape plan goes wrong, however, resulting in the death of Brad and the supposed death of Michael as well. Trevor manages to somehow fight the odds and to escape the enclosing police enforcement. Nine years go by, in which we learn that Michael was not dead after all, but had instead struck a deal to rat out his co-robbers in return for witness protection and the promise of a clean slate for Michael and his family. Michael, now currently residing in Los Santos, comes into contact with a small-time thug named Franklin. Since Michael has been spending the last nine years in witness protection, living the wealthy lifestyle, he lost touch with his old ways and secretly longs for the excitement his previous life brought him. Recognizing that same lust for thrills and easy money in Franklin, he decides to take him under his wing and, due to circumstances, Michael ends up getting back in the game with long-lasting consequences as a result. And worse yet, his insane partner in crime from a decade ago, Trevor Phillips, who Michael had presumed dead, turned out to have fled to Sandy Shores in San Andreas, close to Los Santos. It doesn't take long for Michael to appear on Trevor's radar, someone who he had always presumed to be dead and thought of as friends. Learning this information, Trevor sets out to meet Michael to find out how he survived and why Trevor never knew about this. Before long, shit hits the fan and the three protagonists are required to work together to survive the odds against an alarming number of powerful enemies. Graphics Despite its age, this game really is still a jaw-droppingly gorgeous game on basically all fronts. The amount of detail is simply staggering and nothing short of impressive. The lighting, shadows, textures and animations are all incredibly high quality, polished up to the high heavens. Rockstar even went so far as to include a complete 28 in-game day moon cycle, with each day a different moon phase, something most people probably wouldn't even notice, but is still a testament to the quality nonetheless. San Andreas is back, although reimagined completely compared to its title or predecessor. Los Santos is Rockstar's take on a fictional Los Angeles, complete with all the matching landmarks Los Angeles is known for, again crafted in ridiculous detail. There's just something about the graphics in this game, coupled with the animations and last but certainly not least, sound design. Everything in this game seems to scream top-notch production values and it shows no matter where you are on the map and all the little details make for one hell of an immersive experience. Hearing the wind rustling through the shrubs in the arid Blaine County with the sun setting down certainly puts you into the world in a way few other games can. Or what about the stupid amount of detail they put into the underwater environments? I can't recall a game that had a better looking and sounding underwater environment than what you see in GTA V. Although too bad, sharks tend to scare the hell out of me, so moments of beauty often turn into moments of dread for me. <laughs> Still, the amount of care put into a relatively unimportant part of the game is another testament to this game's incredible presentation. My only issue with the graphics in this game is just the physics engine in itself. It looks good enough, but compared to the Euphoria engine, which was seen in GTA 4, I feel it seems somewhat of a downgrade. The Euphoria engine in GTA 4 just allowed for a wider variety of physics and a more detailed car damage model. Gameplay Honestly, I don't even know where to begin talking about the gameplay. I mean, who doesn't know about GTA, right? You got guns, you got a life of crime, pesky police and a plethora of cars to steal, and possibly even the urge to relive your Carmageddon days of driving over those poor pedestrians. But not surprisingly, GTA is much more than the sum of its parts. So, let's first talk about the movement in this game. If I'm not mistaken, all animations are motion captured, so the feel and portrayal of movement is in general quite realistic, however I would be lying if I said the game was flawlessly done in that regard. Nobody would ever choose to face plant the pavement in favor of simply climbing down a ladder, although moments like these do often cause an additional moments of laughter. Grand Theft Auto V is basically a crime-filled sandbox in which you can live out your most unsociable desires with the only punishment of ridiculously fast police response times. I mean, almost nothing removes daily stress better and faster than beating down civilians for no reason at all, 
or driving through San Andreas at a leisurely pace, taking in the sweet sights. However, often the police is not far behind and due to their spot-on accuracy with their pistols and their uncanny ability to locate you at all times, you'll often find yourself entangled in a police chase which usually results in a brutal gunfight. Now here, here is where the game shines. There's a good number of weapons, all with a different feel and effectiveness, and shooting them feels properly satisfying. The impact of your bullets, the sound of the gunfire itself and the amount of customization makes weapons interesting and diverse. Mowing down cops, criminals or that gangbanger that severely underestimates your gun power has a certain rawness to it. It feels realistic due to the way the impact of bullets impact the body too. Shoot in the leg and they might lie on the ground, grunting in pain. Or handle things quickly with a well-placed headshot, which feels just about as brutal as you'd expect it to in real life. I can only imagine. Especially if you like to engage in lengthy police chases, you'll notice a good getaway car is key to your prolonged survival. Which brings me to the whole driving aspect of the game. Now, GTA 5 went with a completely different approach to driving as opposed to GTA 4. Whereas GTA 4 had vehicle handling that resembled a more realistic approach, GTA 5 instead has a much more arcade focus and feel. Now usually this can be considered bad, but I feel the way GTA 5 handles car handling is an overall improvement, especially when it comes to the longevity of the game. What I mean with this is that there's a ridiculous number of cars, and while the game does make driving them feel easy, there is still a surprising amount of complexity in actually driving well. I mean, anyone can drive a car in GTA 5, but there's still enough nuances to really, really separate the pros from the newbies which makes the overall driving a lot more accessible compared to GTA 4, but it also has enough depth to truly master driving over a long period of time. And if you couple that with the many car modifications you can add at the Los Santos mod shop, as well as the sheer number of cars you can drive, which all handle quite differently, mind you, and you got a surprisingly complex driving game for a game where driving isn't really the main focus. Although, I'm not even sure if I agree with that statement when I think about it, and that's probably one of the reasons I really like this game, because I view this as multiple games in one. Simply because the game has fantastic shooting, great driving, and even flying around in the different planes and helicopters feels great. Couple all that into a large playground called San Andreas, and you basically have a game that's competent in being multiple games at once. Now, all these gameplay elements get utilized quite efficiently during the actual progression of the game. I mean, the main story missions are generally not only quite thrilling to play through, but they often make excellent use of the wide variety of different vehicles offered in the game. Missions in GTA 5 come in all shapes and sizes, ranging from simple and straightforward missions to action-packed, high-stakes missions where it really feels like failure is not an option. Now, the triple protagonist mechanic of being able to play as either one of them at any time, paired with the specific missions available only to certain protagonists, gives you, as the player, good enough reason to muck about the map as either Michael, Franklin or Trevor. Not only that, but even Michael, Franklin and Trevor are all animated differently, so actually playing them can feel like a breath of fresh air once you grow tired of focusing on just one character, which was mainly Michael and Franklin for me. The way money has been handled in this game is also very different compared to its predecessors, and I'm not sure if I really like it. In the other games, you gradually earn more money with each mission, but in GTA 5 the payouts are pretty few and far in between. As a result, there's quite a lot of missions that don't pay out at all, with the biggest payout literally at the end of the main story. It makes sense within the context of the story, but personally it felt less satisfying compared to the other games. Not only that, but money is not really all that worthwhile, aside from buying weapons, cars and properties. Now if you actually buy properties, they unlock basic busywork missions, but overall the properties themselves don't offer any substantial gameplay value and are often overpriced, so to actually break even, it will take many in-game weeks, which in reality takes unreasonably long and I suspect most people would already be done with the single player game at that point. Overall score. The good. Graphics! Yeah, despite its age, it is still one of the best looking games on the market. I've put in many, many hours into this game and I still occasionally encounter picturesque moments of beauty. The attention to detail in this game is simply mind-boggling. Guns and gun variety. The guns feel tight to shoot and there's plenty of different weapons to toy around with. Immersion. Few games can suck you into its world the way GTA 5 can. Cars and driving. 
plenty of cars, plenty of customization, and plenty of diversity in the car's handling and feel. Sound design Few games match the superb sound design and the detail thereof heard in GTA V. A fine but very subtle example of this would be the sound of the engine ticking when it cools down after a little joyriding, or simply the fact that basically all cars sound differently. Stuff like that simply elevates good to fantastic. Protagonists The incredibly varied cast of protagonists and the way they're all woven into its storyline not only creates a unique experience, but adds a layer of immersion to the overall gameplay. Voice acting High quality voice acting throughout, whether it's Michael, Franklin, Trevor or the near infinite amount of random comments made by civilians. Although I really do miss my mother's my sister. Missions GTA V features an interesting amount of thrilling main missions and side missions offered to the player in often unexpected ways. San Andreas Large, beautiful, detailed and filled to the brim with subtle details. Now, the bad. Underutilized map. In essence, the game seems to put way too much focus on Los Santos itself and I feel it has severely underutilized the rest of the giant map. In hindsight, it feels a bit like a missed opportunity and if I had to guess, I'd say the development cost of creating such a lively and realistic underwater world probably could have been spent more appropriately by fleshing out the map even further. Money distribution and worth. During the storyline, there's moments of earning a good number of dollars, but there's a lot of money drought too. The majority of missions don't pay out, and also the majority of your money literally comes after you finish the main story, which just seems like an odd approach. Money is generally pretty useless too, unfortunately. Protagonists Even though I also mentioned the triple protagonist approach is a good thing, I do feel the ambition of Rockstar regarding this exceeded its grasp which as a result can make the characters not feel as fleshed out as they could have been had the game focused on one central character, as was the case with all prior games. Story progression I feel the story progression overall is a little bit unsatisfying, or at least not as grandiose as it could have been. Cops Now the cops themselves aren't too bad, but they can feel cheap always knowing exactly where you are at any point in the map. I also think the cops are just a pain in the ass and they can sap the fun out of just free roaming too easily. And lastly, something I feel I can't directly attribute to the bad score of the single player, but Rockstar increased dedication to GTA Online and seemingly neglect of the single player. I mean, I get it, you know, they made big bucks with the GTA Online shark card sales, I mean well over 500 million in fact, but in a way it feels like that removed their motivation to keep working on their already fantastic single player. In all fairness to Rockstar, I believe they never even promised DLC as they did with GTA 4, but it still feels like their greed squandered a fantastic opportunity. Closing words Before I'm gonna close this review, I'd like to mention that I've purposely not spoken about the online part of the game. I wanted to keep the single player and online component separate, because, let's be frank here, in essence they're both completely different experiences. That being said, what I love the most about the single player part of San Andreas is how alive the game feels. There's just so much activity with people roaming about, animals traversing the wilderness and other random events taking place that all add a layer of liveliness to the game. Due to the stupid amount of detail and attention the game's been given, it often really feels like you're actually in the world itself. The immersion is no joke. Also, since I'm from the Netherlands, it's kinda nice to see Los Angeles up close, or at least a fictional version of it. Is it worth it? Not something I'm admittedly very proud of, but my Steam reads over 600 hours played, with at least 250 hours of those spent in the single player. I did replay the single player twice, taking my sweet time, but it should at least be a good indication of the value you can get out of this game. With that, I rest my case. This game is definitely worth it. Thanks a lot for watching guys, be sure to drive by that like button and absolutely riddle it with bullet holes and I wish you, as usual, a fantastic, crime-filled, glorious day.